So daily there are any number of headlines that suggest the economy is doing well and better compared to a few years ago, whether it's optimistic jobs reports, lower gas prices, good day for the stock market, all appear to be getting better. And certainly you'd be forgiven for thinking that, but maybe the question is not so much. Exit polls from this week's election show Americans continue to struggle and they continue to think that the economy is not so well off. Here to talk about a financial strategist from STA Wealth, Lance Roberts, one of our money guys. Good to have you here. Absolutely. So um, you're always kind of, uh, well, you're accused of being a, uh, a bear <laughs> in a yeah, market. So uh, it's only because I report the facts as they really are. Chance to be a curmudgeon. Yeah. You just well, you just wrote an article uh, which is intended more for uh, for money-minded people. Right. Uh, but let's let's break it down for for me because uh, I don't understand all those things. But um, are we doing well? Well, okay, look, the, the referendum yesterday, uh, or actually on Tuesday, the yeah. vote, it, it was a referendum by individuals about the state of the economy because when the exit polls came out, the, what, how did you vote and why did you vote that way, the, major, the overwhelming majority was it was the economy. And look, people vote because of how they feel, right? Mm -hmm. It's how they, if they're, if they're not feeling prosperous, then they want change, right? This is the whole thing. And so that's what we saw in the election. But if you look across the spectrum over the last five years, people on average, 80% of the population has less net worth than they had five years ago. They have fewer full-time jobs than they had five years ago. And their net asset values are less than they were five years ago. So if you take a look at the spectrum of how you and I and the majority of people live, Mm -hmm. They're not better off, and that was what the vote came across on Tuesday. We look at the unemployment, for example, down sure. to 5.9 percent on a national right. basis. Taken as a snapshot, that looks great. Right. Um, a lot of those jobs, um, in fact, uh, uh, a payroll report yesterday suggested 230 jobs created, 230,000 jobs. <laughs> yeah, uh, big difference there. Um, a lot of those, though, are, are, are lower-paying part-time positions, aren't well, they? Well, it's more than that. It's Yes, and it is correct. First of all, the population grows, it grows at roughly 200,000 people a month. Okay. Working-age population grows about 200,000 people a month. So basically all we're doing is we're just adding enough jobs to take pace of the number of people coming into the population. All right. The second thing is is that you have 5.9% unemployment, but that does, see, that doesn't include the 94 million individuals that are no longer counted as part of the labor force. Furthermore, 45% of the individuals between the ages of 16 and 54 years of age, your working age group, are no longer counted as part of the labor force. So that's why you have a 5.9% unemployment rate. If we include all those individuals back in, we're talking roughly about 13 to 14%. And I, I hear that uh, uh, often on uh, on social media when right. we have these headlines, people will chime in, well, there's this as well. Right. Uh, also, gas prices. Yes. They are trending down. Good thing. Significantly down. Great for consumers in the short term because our, our fill-ups are not costing as That's much. That's right. Uh, that does not help the bigger picture, though, does it? Well, it certainly doesn't help us here living in Houston. And, and this is kind of the dichotomy, right? We want lower gas prices because we pay less at the right. pump. Great for our spending. It's like getting a tax cut, right? Because mm -hmm. we're going to have more money to spend. The problem is, is that we are job-centric to oil here in Houston. And once we get below about $80 a barrel, which where we are now, it becomes a real challenge for individuals to frack and to drill a lot of these new shell plays or have a much higher cost basis. Yeah. So there's already been announcements by oil companies to basically slow hiring, basically reducing earnings estimates for next year. And if we maintain these lower oil prices for any period of time, we could see some impact to our job market here. So there is a risk to this. Saudi Arabia has indicated that yeah. they're willing to undercut the price to the United States to put those smaller producers stateside yeah. um, in a in a tough spot, perhaps put them uh, out of business. Yeah, on an investment stand front too, a lot of people are investing in high yield bonds uh, to get higher yield. Mm -hmm. A lot of those high yield bonds were issued by small oil companies, and there's a lot of risk in that area right now because if they do, if oil prices do stay out, stay low for a long period of time, we're going to see a lot of those lower, smaller, capitalized companies go out of business. Mm -hmm. so. I, uh, let's turn to, real quickly to the stock sure. market yeah. because uh, the numbers are huge. Uh, another record day yesterday. Yeah. Who knows? how it's going to shake out t today, opening bell, what, uh, 50 minutes ago. So um, you have long suggested uh, that, the, that the Dow particularly mm -hmm. is overinflated. Oh, yeah. Well, look, the, the, the market's been being driven over the last really three, four years by a lot of the interventions by the Federal Reserve. Those have now ended. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have a little bit of that left. But now 
Bank of Japan has now jumped in with quantitative easing. The ECB, uh, European Central Bank, is trying to do the same thing to replace what the Federal Reserve took out. Mm -hmm. But if you take a look at the actual valuations of the markets and a lot of the underlying supports of the market, they are getting weaker. And we are very long in this game. Asset prices don't go up forever, and so it's important to understand that if you've got money invested, it's this is a good time to just maybe rethink a little bit about how you're invested, how much risk you're taking, mm -hmm. high yield investments, these type of things where they've had nice runs the last year. Yeah. Maybe time to take some profits. 401k, go ahead and rebalance things. Absolutely, Lance Roberts, That's I appreciate it. Idea. So we sent a bunch of new people to Washington. Time now for them to put up or shut up and get get something done. Well, that is, for that's, goodness that's sake. the big thing. All right, just do something. Do something. <laughs> All right, Melissa.